Today I'm going to talk about Encanto and narcissistic family dynamics. As a brief summary of narcissistic personality disorder, people with NPD, which I'll refer to as narcissists, are people who are essentially two-year-olds in adult bodies. They legitimately believe they are the best and most special people who have ever lived. Ironically, they're all essentially the same, as this condition has a whole host of symptoms which are always true with anyone suffering from it. These include shamelessness, having no empathy, being unable to see other people as little more than puppets, having horrible boundaries, being entitled, arrogant, pathologically envious, and highly manipulative. And that's just scratching the surface. Everything about these people is a lie, actually. But it's a lie they convince themselves of first. Narcissists see their family, especially their children, basically as dolls that they own. Things that they are allowed to do with as they please. Their kids are definitely not allowed to have distinct personalities in any way. Instead, the narcissistic parent assigns roles to everyone and will keep that person in that role until either one of them is dead or the victim goes no contact. But while they are in that family unit, they will be forced to enmesh with their horrible narcissistic parent or their lives will be ruined by that same narcissist over and over again until they comply. Well, unless you're their scapegoat, then everything about you is bad in their eyes. Speaking of scapegoats, you see, people with NPD will always assign a person to be their golden child and a person to be their scapegoat. And if they have children, these people will always be their own kids unless they don't have any contact with them at all. As for the golden child, this person the narcissist projects all their good qualities onto, and as for their scapegoat, they project all their bad qualities, and never does a good quality go to a scapegoat nor a bad quality to a golden child. But the golden child can quickly become a scapegoat when when something happens that shines them in a negative light, even when it's something that isn't their fault. Then they'll immediately be put into the devaluation stage, and this can be so bad sometimes that they become the family scapegoat. I mention this because before Mirabelle gets rejected by the magic door, even though it's not clear whether she's a golden child or not, she's definitely treated a lot better by her narcissistic grandmother in the one scene we see before this happens. Strengthen our home. Make your family proud. Make my family proud. What do you think my gift will be? You are a wonder, Mirabel Madrigal. Whatever gift awaits will be just as special as you. After, though, she's definitely the family scapegoat. The thing that narcissists are most resistant to is shame. And if you ever do something that makes them feel ashamed for any reason, you will be punished for it. This can be something that doesn't have anything to do with them, or even you for that matter, but rest assured they will never forget about it and might find reasons to punish you for it for the rest of your relationship. And for scapegoats, nothing you do will ever be perceived as a positive to the narcissist, and in fact will always be seen as if it's a bad thing even if they have to invent reasons why this is so. I know you want to help, but tonight must go perfectly. So the best way for some of us to help is to step aside. Let's first notice that since Mirabelle never got a door, her picture isn't hanging with everyone else's, which is very devaluing of her as a person. And now let's talk about scapegoats in a family dynamic. Notice the person who's specifically scapegoating Mirabelle is her grandmother Alma. But she has such a domineering hold over the whole family that everyone else starts scapegoating her too. No one thinks Mirabelle can do anything. Even her parents seem to think she'd be better off not helping as if she's doomed to fail from the get-go. You don't have to overdo it. I know, Mama. I remember. Yeah, remember. You have nothing to prove. You have nothing to prove. To prove. Mm -hmm. No one thanks her for helping out. Everyone just wants her out of there. <sighs> the little sisterly advice. If you weren't always trying too hard, you wouldn't be in the way. And I'm not in the way. You are. Let's talk about flying monkeys. This is a term by people in the know about NPD for a specific type of person. They are people who the narcissist attracts to themselves, who will do two specific things for them. One, they'll believe everything the narcissist tells them. And two, do their dirty work for them, oftentimes without the narcissist even asking them to. Typically, there are yes men or yes women who will feed the narcissist compliments and agree with all the bad ideas the narcissist has about anything. They will also be the first to abuse the narcissist's scapegoat once they can. Again, often without the narcissist even telling them to. But they are so caught up in whatever the narcissist is telling them is true, they make it their mission to take it upon themselves to correct the made-up problem. 
As you can probably guess, many of these people are narcissists themselves, or just gullible. Okay, there isn't a great example of flying monkeys in this movie, but everyone in the family but Mirabelle just goes along with everything Alma tells them, which is exactly what flying monkeys do. Back to the subject of scapegoats. Here's an interesting statistic. Though narcissistic parents have no empathy at all, typically the siblings of scapegoats will also have less empathy. This is especially true of the golden child. She's the Theoretically, this is because they've learned to essentially look the other way to block out this unfair treatment of their scapegoated sibling, and also know, at least unconsciously, that if they try to stand up for the scapegoat, they will be devalued and abused and may become the new scapegoat themselves by doing so. Some even learn that if they treat the scapegoat poorly, the narcissistic parent will not only not devalue the person attacking the scapegoat, but may also reward them because of it. Back to the movie, you'll notice that narcissists don't need much reason to devalue their scapegoated child. I knew you could do it. A gift just as special as you. <gasps> we need a picture! Everyone, it's a great night. It's a perfect night. Saying things that isolate them and then physically leaving them out is a very typical behavior when it comes to narcissists and their scapegoats. Though scapegoats can also fall into the trap that is narcissistic personality disorder, this family role is actually more likely than any other role to become empaths. Something Mirabelle demonstrates here as even though everyone devalues her abilities, she still cares about everyone and wants what's best for the family, which are obvious empathetic traits. Always walking alone. Now the next song, sung by Luisa, Mirabelle's super strong sister, and the whole thing demonstrates another narcissistic family role, the surrogate parent. This is the child of a narcissistic parent who takes over the duties of the parent for their brothers and sisters. You see, narcissists can't take responsibility for anything and basically treat their children as little more than an inconvenience for them. If they can divert their responsibility to anyone, they will do so. They can then blame them for any problem for any child they don't like, but also steal all the credit and act as the perfect mother or father or grandmother in this case whenever they're in view of others. This is also so if any child actually did talk about their neglectful and abusive parent about their neglect and abuse, the other person would question the child because how could such a perfect parent really be so awful? The next song, Don't Talk About Bruno, does a good job of showing how most people in the family probably see another narcissistic family role, the lost child. The lost child is something of an anomaly to the narcissist. You see, the narcissist will more or less automatically assign a golden child and a scapegoat, and other roles might pop up like the surrogate parent or flying monkeys, but the lost child is none of these things. In fact, in the narcissist's mind, the lost child isn't anything. They will more or less treat this person as if they aren't there, and will shun anyone who doesn't do the same. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. Because of this, Everyone in the family will start treating the lost child in this way, especially the lost child themselves. And this person often becomes lost themselves, both physically and metaphorically, as many will struggle with a sense of identity for their entire lives. Essentially, these people are ignored and mistreated as if they were nothing by their narcissistic parent and anyone under the parent's control until they just leave. By yourself, after I leave. What? Or in some cases, the narcissist kicks them out. They see the lost child as a stain on the family, probably for reasons the narcissist just made up in their own heads. But really, the narcissist just doesn't see a role for their lost child, so they don't put them in one and treat them like a discarded toy for the most part. Know that this is very different from how they treat the scapegoat, who you might say they have a very dark and unhealthy obsession with. The lost child is a person they just downright ignore unless they absolutely can't. And oftentimes, once the lost child is out of their lives, the narcissist acts like they weren't even there to begin with. One thing I thought of during this dinner scene, that's that Aunt Pepa's emotions control the weather and everyone just acts like this is a big problem instead of asking her if anything is wrong ever. You see, people with NPD don't have a normal spectrum of emotions. This is because they actively suppress all their bad emotions and project them onto the people around them. And when they see that anyone is experiencing what they consider to be a bad emotion, the narcissist will treat that person as if something is wrong with them. Emotional outbursts can be a real problem for survivors of narcissistic abuse. This is because they constantly suppress their negative emotions because they've been taught that if they 
have them, something must be wrong with them. And these suppressed emotions need some kind of outlet and will come out somehow. Skipping to the next song that Mirabelle's perfect golden child sister sings, which, much like every other song up to this point, except for the opening number, this is a good example of another member of a narcissistic family. In this case, the golden child, which I have talked about before, but this is a good time to tell you that being a golden child isn't all flowers and rainbows like it might appear to be on the surface. At least unconsciously, the golden child realizes that they have to appear perfect to the narcissist at all times. And they do this by excelling at whatever it is the narcissist wants them to excel at, in order to be the perfect little doll the narcissist wants them to be. Know that this isn't something they do entirely by choice. It's the way they've learned to survive in this completely broken family. And they know that if they start to slip, they can easily become the scapegoat or lost child without any rhyme or reason to it. Unfortunately, the golden child is typically the role that is most likely to become another person with NPD, but know that all children in a narcissistic family are much more likely to develop NPD or other type B personality disorders than people raised in a healthy environment. Having said that, know that the golden child can also become an empath, but the golden child has to realize two things that are very hard for a child to realize in order to do this. One, that my parent is evil, and two, the things my parent is telling me is the truth are actually lies. Being that our parents are our gateway to the world, it's very hard to realize something is wrong when you've been taught your whole life that it's normal. Back to Encanto, Mirabel saves the miracle, but her grandmother is unable to see any good in her actions and rewrites history in order to see everything through her own twisted version of reality where Mirabel is always a bad person. Just Isabella wasn't happy and of she Of course didn't... she's unhappy. You ruined her proposal. No, no, no. You have to stop Mirabel. The crack started with you. Bruno left because of you. I don't know why you weren't given a gift, but it is not an excuse for you to hurt this family. Mirabel finally realizes her role as the scapegoat. I will never be good enough for you and seems to realize what Alma is doing without specifically saying that she's suffering from narcissistic personality disorder. Isabella won't be perfect enough. Bruno left our family because you only saw the worst in him. He loves this family. I love this family. We all love this family. You're the one that doesn't care. I just wanted to be something I'm not. This is basically how every child of a narcissistic parent feels all the time. The narcissist has to devalue everything about you that makes you an individual. If you are an individual, that makes you a human being. If you are a human being, then their twisted version of reality must be incorrect. And the narcissist can't be incorrect. The flaw must be with you exhibiting any amount of individualism, which they will devalue and exploit until you don't know who you are anymore. They'll do this to their own children and other family members more than anyone else they know. That's how sick they are. Let's skip ahead a little to this Academy Award nominated song and just mention that this is a common tactic among narcissists. Once you realize they've been horrible to you and blow up at them about it, you'll start to feel guilty. Narcissists are expert manipulators and they know that while you're in this state, they can use it to make you apologize to them. And once you do, that means in the narcissist's mind, that they won. You took all the blame and it's all your fault now. They will also tell whatever sob story they need to tell you in order to make you feel sorry for them. This is so they can then further deflect blame by basically saying, it wasn't my fault for being horrible to you, it's that those horrible things happened to me. This will usually be accompanied by a half-hearted apology that they don't mean at all because their only goal is to put you back into whatever role they assigned you in and the abuse will continue on as normal, completely unhindered. For the rest of the movie, well, I'm kind of disappointed with Disney, truthfully. But it's like, what do you expect? The current Hollywood lie seems to be that if you realize these people are horrible and then tell them how horrible they are, they'll magically realize what you say is true and just as magically get better. I have this to say to that. <laughs>